Well, it's my pleasure to introduce today's Reed and Christine Halliday Executive Lecture Series speaker. It's uh, Jared Stewart, who's the CEO and founder of Influence International and uh, Corporate Alliance. So Jared was born in uh, Portland, Oregon. He's the fifth of 11 children. One of Jared's favorite uh, activities is, is searching for a revolutionary idea and then finding a way to bring it to life. Jared is deeply committed to the Utah Jazz basketball, uh, BYU football, and UVU Wolverine athletics. Uh, Jared loves to travel. One of his favorite things is going to New York and uh, taking in a good Broadway play. His uh, favorite pastime, however, is spending time with his better nine-tenths, and it's actually nine-tenths and nine-nine-nine-tenths wife, Lena, and uh, their four daughters. Currently, he's the CEO and founder of Influence International, and he's going to explain a little bit more about uh, Influence International and a new uh, platform that they've uh, just recently launched. We will also be hearing from his uh, sister, Sarah, who's a big part of the company, Sarah Stewart is, uh, will be speaking a little bit, and uh, a couple things about Sarah. She's a big-time marathoner, and uh, she was the, uh, one of the uh, authors, I guess, Jared, right, in the book that was published, uh, that they published, called The City of Influence. And uh, right now, Jer or Sarah is participating in a play called Farewell to Eden, which was first produced here at UVU about uh, 10 years ago and it happened to be written by uh, Jared and Sarah's brother, Mahanrai Stewart. So we're lucky to have Jared Stewart with us today. Let's give him a round of applause. So does this work? Good, good. All right, I am an entrepreneur, not a speaker. So for the next See, I'm probably not even supposed to go out of that light or something. So the, um, the next hour, I guess a little less than an hour, we're just going to have a little more of a conversation than we are necessarily a speech. Um, I don't, I don't uh, theorize a lot. I don't uh, do the speech as well. Um, what, what's good about that is that we happen to be in the relationship business. And you may feel a little comfortable right now because you're so spread apart. And that might be a little bit generational, but we're in the, like I said, we're in the relationship business. You're gonna get a little closer together. A lot of, our, a lot of the stuff we talk about is um, not just theory, but practice. And at the, at the core of what we do, like Brad said, Corporate Alliance was the original organization. Influence International later became the parent company. Uh, where really what we've done is redefined the way that business gets done. And to do that, you have to redefine the way that relationships get built. And that's been our focus. In the past, the way things got done, if you're gonna build a business relationship, you went out and did a little bit of networking, right? You went out and you talk, you talk a lot about it in business school, you talk about, about it in different areas. Networking implies motivation that is self-centric. It's where it's focused on your objectives and on your goals. Building a relationship, on the other hand, is a little bit different. Any good relationship is built through a different path, a different model. We've taken that model and applied it to business instead of what we called the old uh, gladiator approach. And we've decided, we've built an engine that actually builds those relationships for our executives. Uh, recently, as Brad mentioned also, we just, we wrote the book, my sister and I, called The City of Influence. It's a little more of a Harry Potter read than your traditional business book. The City of Influence walks through the nine keys to building relationships, the essential components of building any kind of business relationship. Uh, just a little while ago, about 10 days ago, we launched our social platform, uh, which we will test in Utah and then scale globally. Uh, in fact, I think we're going to show a quick clip of that, if we can. It's cityofinfluence.com is, is the website. Meet Jack. Jack is a gladiator. He believes that in business, he must kill or be killed. He doesn't know it yet, but his next opponent is bigger and stronger. Jack doesn't stand a chance. Like most defeated gladiators, he will lick his wounds, pick up his sword, and get back to work. Jack will probably spend his entire life fighting in the Colosseum. Unless, of course, he finds a better way. Lucky for Jack, there is an alternative. Instead of being a gladiator, he could become the mayor of his own city of influence. The City of Influence is an analogy where Jack's business network is turned into a city. 
every house, shop, and high-rise representing a different person inside of his influence. As a mayor, Jack will stop fighting solely for his own survival and begin investing in his residents' success as well. As he sincerely learns about their needs and serves their interests, the people inside Jack City will begin to trust him and want to play an active role in his success. Working side by side with his residents, Jack will begin to accomplish things that he would have previously thought impossible. As a gladiator, Jack fought alone, but as a mayor, he has an army ready to help him. There's a better way to do business, and Jack just found it. Are you ready to join Jack and become the mayor of your own city of influence? If the answer is yes, you will soon have access to the world's finest social networking platform. This revolutionary business application will provide you with a powerful relationship system and teach you everything you need to know to effectively run your new city. And for every relationship building task you complete, the state-of-the-art game layer awards you points that you can spend on free products in the city auctions. Imagine a place where your trusted friends pool their knowledge, relationships, and resources to help you problem solve, innovate, and sell. Imagine a place where you list the relationships you need and your trusted network goes to work. Imagine a place where authentic relationships drive all of your business success. Welcome to a whole new way of doing business. Welcome to the City of Influence. So that's basically the analogy. Everybody's like, so what is, the, what is the city of influence? The analogy is, is that we're all mayors of our cities. And it implies that we have a responsibility to the people inside of our cities. There are residents. Inside of our system, there's basically four different levels of trust, level one through four. And level one means that you've had one meaningful interaction. A level two means you've had multiple positive interactions. A level three means you have what's called an established learn, serve, grow cycle. And a level four means that uh, you can call them at two o'clock in the morning to help make payroll or pick you up at the airport. Like those, those are the levels of trust. And there's a formula that, we, that we've kind of come up with at Influence that's basically the, and I, honestly, this, if you're gonna write one thing down, this is probably it. If price and performance are equal, so if you have a P and a P and you have an equal science, level of relationship will trump. Okay, so that greater, greater than sign, zero to four. So if I have a level, if you have the same price and the same performance, and frankly, in the mind of the consumer, price and performance is always, almost always equal because they don't understand the industry well enough. If you're buying a car or if you're buying a computer, sometimes you'll get into the price and performance game, and corporations spend billions of dollars trying to figure out how to increase their price or change or modify their price to get it in line with the, with the standard, or they'll spend billions of dollars also trying to modify the performance side. I've yet to be in a major corporation or a small corporation that has a system for the other side of the equation. Because when price and performance are equal, level, level of relationship will trump. If I have a level three and you have a level one and we, we produce them and provide and ship the same products, that product, that opportunity is going to come to me as a natural flow of the trust. That's just the way that it works. So the question is why hasn't there been a system to build that trust? And if you were gonna have a system that built that trust, how would you build it? So that's what we've spent the last 13 years doing, is building a system that builds the relationship, creates the relationship from the beginning, and modifies it over time, increases levels of trust, and produces the result at the end, so that you can plug yourself in, as opposed to going, because when, when I was your age, they just said, okay, if you wanna get, if you wanna get connected, you wanna get networked, what do they tell you to go do? Anybody? Yeah. Walk up to people, shake their hand, and say hi. Walk up to people, shake their hand, say hi. That's awesome. Difficult, but yeah. Okay, what else? That's, what else? Network. Now, how do you how do you network? Where? Meetings. Meetings. Lectures. Because you guys are really going to get networked today. Look how close you guys are together. Like I don't see anybody within one or two chairs of each other. Okay, so. So some serious, and, and business school, what a fantastic place to network. What a terrible job you're doing. So that's, that's one of the things that we talk about. People naturally go to their safe place. They not, you guys married? See, I'm glad you guys are sitting together. That's great. So 
But that's the point, is that relationships, sometimes we don't, they're not natural. If we don't know people, it's uncomfortable. So we want to spread out. We want to get, we want to get away from each other a little bit. But if you want to build a relationship, there's one way to do it. And it's called the learn, serve, grow cycle. My sister Sarah is going to actually walk you through that in just a second. But let me walk you through just the basics. If you want to build a relationship, you have to learn about somebody. And you're learning with a specific intent in mind. You're learning to understand how you can serve them. Okay? You're learning with the intention of serving. You're learning which relationships they need to build their organization. You're learning to find out what products or services they need to help them be successful. Okay? This isn't, this, a gladiator focuses on what's in it for them. A mayor focuses on what's in it for the people they're trying to serve. And if you learn and serve, so if you gather information and serve the interests, if you know a CEO and you're trying to build a relationship with him, find a way to help him. And over time, the grow will come as a natural result of the learning and serving. There's one of my favorite quotes. It's by an anonymous person, but it goes like this. Successful people are willing to do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. It's that simple. I wrote that quote down. It was actually Hiram Smith. Uh, he was speaking at one of our events. He quoted that, um, and I love it. It's so simple, almost stupid simple, but successful people are willing to do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. It is true, in fact. In fact, we talk about 85% of businesses failing in the first five years. I don't know if that number is accurate, but either way, whether it is or not, it's not true. 85% of businesses don't fail. 85% of founders give up because it's too hard. They're unwilling to do what the successful person is willing to do, which is hang in there and fight and continue to build relationships and do all the things. If you don't have enough passion for your business, for the product, I had a three or four products, different businesses that failed. Why? Because I wasn't willing to sacrifice what was required to have them be successful. So if you really, the first thing you need to do in terms of building your business is fall in love, deeply in love, just like you would with your wife or your husband, and then get in a committed relationship with that business, and then never, ever, ever give up. But if you don't love that business or that product, you will not be, you will be not, you're not prepared to sacrifice what will be required, period. So what I'd like to do, Sarah, if you wouldn't mind coming down, Sarah has, um, a breadth of knowledge. She's fantastic. And she is my sister. Um, it's kind of cool to work with your sister. Uh, she's also one of my best friends. And she'll walk you through some of the details in terms of the next steps. So I'm really glad you all have uh, writing utensils. If you don't have them out, please get some out right now. We're going to do an application. One of my favorite things about Corporate Alliance and Influence and all the different companies that have come out of this is that we stop talking and let you start talking to each other. We shut up at one point. So we're about to shut up and let you start talking. So um, we're going to actually take you through the learn, learn, serve, grow cycle. So what I'd like you to do is you're going to write down three questions. Um, the first question is share a train, plane, or automobile story. Take a second to write that down. Number two, you're going to share about your current job or your future career goals. Number three is write down three current needs. So what we're going to have you do is get in groups of five, and we're going to give you four minutes to answer these questions with each other. You, as a person, will go through all of these questions. Um, you'll answer all of them as the first person. The four minutes will come up. I'll come on the microphone and say, it's time to switch, and you'll go on to the next person. So let me give you an example as you're thinking about what your answers. Three minutes. So um, what you're going to do is, first, I'll give you a really quick uh, example of how you would go about doing this. So I would say, my name is Sarah Stewart. I work for Influence International. A train, plane, or automobile story. 
I recently um, was driving on I-15. Um, it was really, really snowy. And I had just accomplished getting through Christmas without eating any sugar. This was a big goal that I had at this point. I happened to have a box of caramels, like turtle chocolate caramels, and I couldn't throw them away because I loved them so much and I just needed to find somebody to re-gift them to. So I had gone through it, I was really excited, my uh, tire blows out. And I'm sitting on I-15, semis are going past, they're, they're like, you know, huge, um, it was raining, so huge slush waves are coming over me and I'm like, I'm going to die. Like, I'm so close to traffic right now. So I got into the other seat and by the time the people showed up to uh, tow my car, um, all those chocolates were gone. There was about 12 of them. So that's a story. But the reason we do that first is to help you connect with each other as people. That's really important. It's very hard to build a relationship with somebody who says, hello, my business is. So we'll have you start with that. So think about what you'd like to share for that. Write down a couple notes if you need to. Um, professionally, I, I have worked for Influence for nine, 10 years. Um, I actually was an English teacher and my brother conned me into coming and writing a book with him and then I ended up being the director, the director of training. So I've done all kinds of things with publishing and creating these videos and it's been an awesome ride, actually. So that's what I would say for my professional. And then you can also share your future career goals if you'd like to for that. Three needs that I have, and it's really important with these needs that you're very specific. So um, you can share a relationship you'd like to build with a prospective employer, um, with a professor here, with one of the other students, with a company. You could share um, expertise or insight that you need in an area. If you're like, I just really need to know more about this. Um, something you need to get the word out about, just areas you want to know more about. So for example, the three that I wrote down, um, I'm always looking for relationship stories, like business relationship stories, where because somebody knew this person, this amazing opportunity happened, because I used them for the videos. So that's something. Um, we are on Amazon right now, so I'm always looking for people to read the book and to review it on Amazon. And then the third thing is a personal thing, I'm off sugar again. This is like a perpetual thing that goes off in my life. So I'm looking for recipes that uh, have that don't have sugar in them, but that taste good um, as far as desserts. So that's and then I would say I'm done, and then we move on to the next person. Now at that point, really listen to the other people in your group. It's going to be really tempting to think about what you're going to say, but think, okay, how could I serve this person? They just told me three needs, which is gold in building relationships. If you know what people need you can build a relationship faster. That's the fastest way to build a relationship, is to hear a need and then to serve it. So um, I'm gonna give you just a minute to kind of gather your thoughts and then I need you to get together um, with a group of five and then I'll tell you when to start. Let's make sure too that the five, you two, nope, can't be together. So please be with four other people that you do not know already. Or if you have class but that you don't have a deep level of relationship with. So when I see that everybody's gathered together then I'll I'll so go, go ahead, go ahead and find five go ahead and find five people. Okay, if I can get you to turn around, we'll try to get you back. This is always the hardest part, is to get you back, but it's always good. Okay, thank you, thank you. So we've got a few prizes um, for people that 
Can somebody raise your hand and tell me something you learned? It has to be interesting. Something interesting you learned about somebody. Who we got? Yeah, next time you see them, it's going to be like the, those stories especially will stick out. That's why we start with that story, that personal connection, that little personal tie. It just, it, it starts the relationship. It gives it some kind of, it gives it a little bit of soil to grow in. And a lot of people are like, why are we talking about our personal stories in a business setting? It's because trust is built on relationships and relationships are built on stories. They have to understand your story if you want them to connect with who you are. So stories are a big part of what we do. So another, another thing, what did you learn about somebody? Yeah, you, sorry. Oh. Gray shirt. Oh. Yes. Uh, Heather, she has threatened my life and my family. Like, she threatened to beat the crap out of me. Really? With her son, Don. <laughs> I said she's an MMA fighter. Oh, she really is? You're an MMA fighter. You learn the coolest things. Heather, you're an MMA fighter? Like what classification? I don't know anything about it, so. Is there? I just traveled the Muay Thai and the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Very cool. Which one's your favorite? Okay, interesting, right? Super interesting. When you like next time you see her, you're like, like you're saying hi, and you're kind of stepping to the side a little bit, and you're being, giving her a little bit of wider girth. You're making sure you're you're safe. But it, you know, but it's and it's fun and it's interesting. That's what's funny. We've got clients inside of Corporate Alliance that are doing 70, 80, even 90 percent of their total business through our organization. It's insane, and it's because they connect with each other. They know each other. When price and performance are equal, level of relationship trumps. You have to have a system that builds levels of trust if you want to be successful in business. It's just the way it is. And that's the I've been in sales my whole life. We were talking about it in my group, you know, beating the bushes, sending emails, trying to, trying to you know, grind out a living. That's not fun. You know, what if, that was why I started Corporate Alliance in the first place, is because the sales process was broken, terribly broken. And I wanted to fix it. It could be fun, and it is becoming fun. The best relationship people will rise to the top we were talking about how terrible, no one's like, I don't want to go into sales, like, like it was death, okay? And it is to a certain extent, it's because it's painful, but it doesn't have to be that way. Anybody else? Anybody else got anything right up there? Uh, I learned that using a personal story builds a personal trust and it allows people to open up more. Okay, thank you. Thank you for trusting me. Oh, Sarah, by the way, will you give Heather one, two, just? I already did. Oh, thank you. That was nice of you. Okay. Anybody else? One more. Yep, up there. Traveling is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of crazy trains and planes and automobiles experiences? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, thank you. I've got a few, during the q and I've got a few books and different things we're gonna give away too, if you have a question, and we can kind of throw that out there too. Real quick, we're gonna walk you through, inside the book, The City of Influence, this is the book, but this is the old cover. Um, so this is now a collector's item. Um, there's nine keys, nine keys that um, Jack, the main character, goes through. Like I said, it's a little more of a Harry Potter experience. And he goes through, he's essentially Scrooge and has these people visit him and actually walks through this experience about how he's building relationships wrong and why his business is failing. It's a, it's a fun read. There's nine keys. I'm going to talk about three. Am I talking about three or two, Sarah? Okay, we're just going to jump in here. We're going to talk about relationship arrogance and just because. And then we'll kind of tie this together. Two, two of my favorite principles, and they're actually kind of sister principles inside of uh, the book. One is called relationship arrogance. And to understand relationship arrogance, I think the best way for us to start that is to actually watch the video. So Sarah, if we can queue up the relationship arrogance video, and then we'll just kind of briefly summarize after. Avoid relationship arrogance. Danger. Populations of countless cities of influence have been decimated by plagues of relationship arrogance. Relationship arrogance is prioritizing relationships based on a forecasted return on investment. An example of relationship arrogance would be sitting down at a corporate alliance event and immediately starting to categorize people. Yes, no, no, definite no, no, definite yes. Before having any kind of meaningful interaction, you've already decided who's worth your time and who isn't. Relationship arrogance can be dangerous because the greatest opportunities often come from the least likely of sources. Additionally, when you immediately dismiss a person, you cut yourself off from all the residents inside their city of influence. And one of those residents might be exactly the person you need to meet. Successful mayors have come to understand a statement made by President Lyndon B. Johnson. The best time to make friends 
is before you need it. Okay, so relationship arrogance, it's, it's deadly. And honestly, everybody has it, so you don't have to feel guilty if you've done it before. Everybody categorizes people, everybody goes across, okay, this person can help me, this person can help me, this person can't help me, I'm gonna ignore this person. I'm gonna share one of my quick, my quick stories. There is a, um, uh, a woman that I met probably about two, probably eight years ago, and she came to one of our events. At the time, she was, in terms of the business community, she wouldn't be classed as very, very high on the, the social scale. She was a Mary Kay uh, salesman. And it was interesting, um, and she kind of helped run different divisions. She, she kind of helped educate me on that a little bit. But she was great, a really great person. And uh, she came to our events, and everybody loved her. And we built a relationship um, just because, uh, because relationships are important. And over the years, she later became um, more active. Um, she ended up actually becoming our second, third largest investor in the company. She um, has, uh, at different times, uh, has provided the, the capital and, and is actually working inside the business to build total systems inside our organizations. The, the natural impulse at the beginning of our relationship would be, this person can't help me, couldn't possibly help me financially, couldn't help my business grow. If I was focused exclusively on getting those things to happen, it's a mistake to have relationship arrogance, period. There's just no, there's no way around it. You have to work at it, though. And you have to, when you're building relationships, you build them just because. There's a whole chapter in the book that talks about building relationships just because. Uh, there's one other story. That was my personal story. I'm gonna, we're gonna have you watch one other video uh, of another, another uh, just because story. <laughs> Relationship arrogance means prioritizing relationships based on a forecasted return on investment. Refusing to build relationships with others because you can't see an immediate return is dangerous because some of the greatest opportunities often come from the least likely of sources. Not so long ago, in a land called Philadelphia, Kim Avila's arrived at a hotel gala. She noticed a woman sitting alone and introduced herself. The woman's name was Linda. Her daughter was getting married. Kim invited her over to check out the space at the Philadelphia Marriott where she worked. Kim also introduced Linda to some of the other guests. They whispered, why are you talking to that lady? What type of wedding would that be? Look at the way she's dressed. Kim replied, whatever. The next day, Kim asked the hotel wedding coordinator to show Linda around. She went down to greet her, took one look, turned around, and came right back. Are you kidding me? She doesn't have the money to hold anything here. Kim went down to greet Linda herself. As they talked about her needs for the wedding, they turned out to be the following. Police escort to the family and guest receptions. 45 security boxes for jewelry at the hotel. 300 suites at $459 a night for an entire week. Dinner for $2,500 at $135 per person, bringing the wedding total to $836,000. They also blocked off Center Street in Philadelphia so Linda's son-in-law could ride down on a white horse to pick up his bride. Moral of the story? Don't judge a book by its cover. Linda's daughter married a Prince of India, and the Philadelphia Marriott received three additional Indian weddings as a result. All right, we're, we're out of time. So, right, we're right there, Brad? Right? So, um, we, we, about two minutes, yeah. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna wrap this up. If you've got any specific questions about any of the nine keys in the city of influence, how to become a, a mayor, uh, how to stop being a gladiator, um, uh, I'm happy to, Sarah and I can hang out here for a little while and we can answer any questions. You can take a peek at the book or if we've got a couple gifts, you can have those too. But um, just so you know, just in closing, um, the, Honestly, when I, was in, when I was in school here, I, um, I, I thought business was gonna be a certain way. I had a perception on how things were going to happen and how things were gonna kinda come down. It's been a lot more work, it's been a lot more commitment than I had anticipated. Um, and it's interesting how much more a role people played in my success. You do not, no one, I mean, there's a whole chapter in the book too that talks about self-madeness. You do not become successful on your own, that's a lie. Bill Gates, doesn't matter, he was Walt Disney, Oprah Winfrey, if you read their stories, we've researched them. We know 
how they became successful. It's because they were good mayors and they built cities of influence and those relationships are what drove their success, including the supreme Steve Jobs. Okay, it doesn't matter who it is. That no one, a self-made person is a myth. And if you wanna be successful in business or anything else that you're gonna do, you need to invest in relationships. You need to learn about people, you need to serve their interests, and over time, you will grow and so will they. And that's the way to really make a business uh, functional, operational, and successful over time. Thanks for coming, appreciate it.